detecting tower of the day April 28, 2024, about 8.07 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. You know, listen, people may be watching these detecting talk of the days. And there may be some people that won't even watch my channel, and I could really care less, to be honest with you. Couldn't care less. They're like, well, you never show your face. And who is this guy or person? Well, let me share a little something with you here. You remember this gentleman, Powell Harvey? I believe he's dead now. I think that's correct. You know, he did a radio broadcast for years. People listened to him, didn't they? They never seen his face, really, did they? But they listened to him. How about that? Is that where Sharpshooter got this idea to do these detective talks? Days. Not really, but I'm just point that out. I am surprised somebody else didn't figure it out before me, though. So, you know, there's some people in the general public. Now, I'm walking around out here with this camera. There's some people in the general public. If they see you with a metal detector used, if they think you're a whack job, okay? <laughs> There's some people that probably thinks I'm a whack job because I like to hunt squirrels with a rimfire rifle. I've put up a lot of videos on that too. But you know, maybe a metal detectorist can see somebody else doing something that maybe they might think they're a whack job. I don't know. I don't generally do that. You know, people can do what they want. I'm not going to prejudge them. But, but it happens out there, okay? I guarantee you. And there's people already knows this. Now, you hear my accent, and I can't do a damn thing about that, okay? And there may be some people out there that are prejudiced. And they judge an accent thinking they're going to... They're going to try to judge either the IQ level or the knowledge level of a person based on their accent. Well, if you're doing that, you're making a big mistake, okay? Take it from me. Just because I don't have a Northeastern accent don't mean I'm a stupid bastard, all right? I was associated with a lot of people in my lifetime for 22 plus years in the Air Force from different parts of the country, even different parts of the world. These people had accents. Was their accent reflective, in my opinion, of their IQ and, and or knowledge levels? The answer is no. Some of the people with the slowest draws were some of the brightest. Some of the people with a northeastern or midwestern accent were some of the, in Sharpshooter's opinion, not so bright. Didn't have quite the knowledge. So who am I? When I drive by you on the side of a road, if you were, if you had a flat tire and needed help, the answer is no. When I drive by you on the highway, if you were in an accident and you needed help, no. Could I save your life if you were involved in an accident based on what I know since I was in the military and did get some training? The answer is I, maybe I could, and I would try to. Would I not stop or not render help of a person on the side of a road because of the color of their skin? The answer is no. Would I not help a person on the side of a road that needed help because of their accent or the language they spoke? The answer is no. I would help them. So that's who I am. Okay. You don't get to see my face, generally. But that's who I am. 
you all get to have your own opinion of me, don't you? And there's people out there with opinions. I can hear what some people are saying, you know, talking amongst maybe their little click buddies. Some of the things I've shown with metal detectors is considered advanced use. Some of it I show it's you are pushing the detector to its limits or to get some of the detecting scenarios to show up with a metal detector you have to work harder you may dig more iron you may dig more trash so I show stuff like that I'm always thinking about the what if what if and you know there's some people out there, you know, there's this one guy, he wears a funny looking hat. You know, you hear these people who label these people as YouTube testers. Well, I don't even really like that term personally, for not for me anyway. You know, I can set a test up for one detector to fail and one to pass. Well, if I can do that and honestly use detector in usable settings, what the hell does that mean exactly? If I can set a test up and the AT Pro using usable settings fails and a DS2 passes, well, what would that mean? And I kept doing that. For several tests, what would that mean? Hmm. Is there a relationship between doing some air test and judging a detector when comparing? The answer is yes. There is some relationship generally. All right. So they're not all created equals. They all have their own, the all models, they have their little personalities to boot. Some of the features, some of the tonal quality, some of the pitch offered, some of the strength of audio that's offered over certain detecting scenarios. That Manicore on wet salt sand is probably the tops of the industry right now on the deepest targets, deepest gold rings that can be had in wet salt sand all right that's just a fact could you hear these some of these same targets with a dais too well you might can hear them the problem is or the question is from my audio volume quality standpoint which one are you liable to hear more so in the wild if you had to make a gamble on which detector would miss it? Alright. But both of those models are very good on the wet salt sand from all reporting that I have seen. Both of those models are good in the saw hunting high conductive cones. So low setting deeper, both are very good. Alright. I am I don't try to necessarily pit two detector models against one another. You know, I'm not you don't see me out here digging holes generally and comparing metal detectors, say, oh this one's deeper, you know. I don't do that. You don't hear me talk a whole lot about depth. You know. I don't do a whole lot talking about depth. Because I think a lot of people get tunnel vision. They worry about the depth and they forget about, you know, what can be in the ground between four and eight inches that they might could get out that they otherwise might leave in the ground. I believe if you, you start using this Manicore and you start using this DS2, for example, 
You may find some targets in sites a mere four inches deep that are high conductive cones. Even our Equinox could do this. When I first got my Equinox, this is what happened. I go to this park. Four inch deep mercury dime. Well, I know that coin had been swept over before. It had even been swept over by the old sharpshooter. Been laying there for eons. But it just didn't get exposed. When I was testing that machine to the Mind Lab Manicore with that M8 call, I'll share this with you. There's nothing wrong with it. I just couldn't talk about it publicly because I was under NDA. Since the machine is released, I'll tell you what happened with that machine. I found a, about a four inch deep cot weed head in this corner of this old house. So what do I do? I go back in there again with the same detector. I go in there with a DS2 with a 9 inch call. Didn't find no mower. Just a little spot. See this camera right here? It was a spot about that big. Corner of the house. So you know, you know, this old house is old. So you know that's where the traffic was. And you know, think about what I'm saying here. So you may find one coin with a detector, even a DS2 with a nine inch call. Well, that could be your red flag. Alert, wait, wait a minute, what's that coin doing there? Oh, okay, I had two and two together. So the manacle with the M8 call, I go in there and I dig two more. About three inches deep. Okay, right there close. I can still see my plug. Now, were these signals ultra stellar signals on that M8 call in that matter? No. They weren't, you know, there was some some bit of compromise. But, boy, I could, but ID and tone, yeah, I could tell it was down there. Okay. So yeah, that's a little clue there, you know, if you, you take a detector into a site and you find a coin in a place, or a couple, and you, you know, you may sweep around with the same model detector. You may find a coin with a manicure with an 11-inch call. See this barn, how this barn is here? Maybe that was an old house. See where I'm walking out here? I find a couple of coins right in here, and there's a lot of iron and pollution, maybe some modern trash. You sweep around there some more without eleven. It. Oh, got this cleaned out. Nothing here. Let's go. You might come back in there with the nine-inch call detector, like the DS2. You might go in there with the M8 call, like on the Manicore, in that same little old spot. You may pick up another coin or two. It's possible. I've seen it. I even did head to heads. On some of this stuff, comparing models and models with different call sizes. Head to head on in the wild targets that were it later exhumed. So I got to see this. And this has a lot to do with some of the videos that I show. You know, everybody, you know. They frown on, oh yeah, sharpshooters on top of the ground with that damn detector that ain't telling me jack shit. Well, you better be thinking again. If you don't think my lab is not looking at air testing and some other stuff they're doing with their development of detectors and XP, you better be thinking again. They are. You know, the ground generally doesn't improve a signal, does it? It degrades it. Well, if you're starting off at a worse place, how are you going to finish at a better place when you add the ground? 
So you take two VLF metal detectors, if one is outperforming the other in the air, when it comes to separation maybe, well how's it going to finish better after the same target scenario is lowered into the ground? It's probably not going to happen, is it? Maybe by freak of nature it could? It could. Not likely. That old foam has done well for me, boys and girls. I've been able to spot deficiencies, bugs on VLF metal detectors to include the legend, to include the Deus 2. And I did videos on these. I even sent some of the videos to the MAGA head chief officer at XP. I would have sent them to that other company, but they didn't believe what I was showing was true. I guess it must have been true, though, because they did an update to fix what I showed, huh? How about that? So yeah, you can go read, you know, you can go see people who are what I consider volumes fine detectorists out digging every hole. You know, they want to go out and try to find as much as they can and they do their little video. You know, maybe they're trying to impress the people to show how good they are. I don't know what they're doing. That's not who Sharpshooter is. I'm more of a methodical detectorist. Now there is some sites around here, not many, where you don't have to be as methodical, meaning you're not select digging per se because of the age of the site and the reduction of, you know, there's not much modern trash in them. But yeah, I see somebody digging every swinging signal a metal detector goes off on. I don't get into that stuff because it goes like this. I can go to a park and if there was unlimited digging allowed, I could take a Manico or an AT Pro into one of them sites and dig every swinging signal and I'm eventually going to hit a go ring. Eventually. I may dig three in one day. I may not dig a single one, but if I keep doing it, I'm going to dig one, just like everybody else. Potluck. Now, granted, some metal detector models will alert on some gold rings and some detecting scenarios. Other models won't. Even a multi-frequency unit could miss a gold ring depending on how it's set up versus another mode or a different setup setting. It can happen. So far to date, there has not been a VLF multi-frequency or single frequency or single frequency selectable machine made. It is a turn on and hunt all lower and higher conductive Cohen scenarios to detect them in a lot of the possible configurations involving modern trash and or iron. There's not one made. Will there ever be one made? I don't know. So you can't take any model made today and walk into a site, for example, an old house site. You can't go in there and walk out and put that machine in one mode, one set of settings, and walk out and say, the site is dead. I could walk in there right behind you with a different model machine, not even knowing how you run your machine, and I could still find something. Now, if I... If I if I knew this old gentleman in Northwest Georgia named Rattlehead, let's say I live close to him, and he's told me, oh, sharpshooter, 
I hunted this here with the dais too, three times. Here's how I had it set up. If he told me how he had that machine set up, I know enough about that machine and I know enough about the manicore that I could change something because of a potential weakness in the setup he was using that could detect some finds in a site that he couldn't necessarily hear or they gave so much or they gave such a clipped tone he didn't hear them to be alerted on. I could do that possibly. Now would I go in there and dig a wheelbarrow full of coins out of a site like that he's been? No. Could I go in there and maybe find one or two depending on the size of the site or a few more? Yes. And this is what's really happening a lot of times in these public detecting places. This is part of it. It's part of the cause of why some of these targets are being found. Now, you might can be a factor depending on the skill level of the user. You know, well, that's going to conclude the detecting talk of the day. I hope everybody has a nice day.